Before leaving office, State Secretary Mike Pompeo announced this Tuesday the U.S. government's recognition that China is committing genocide and crime against humanity against the Uyghurs and other Turkic people of Istarkistan. Newly appointed State Secretary John Blinken endorsed this announcement. Uyghurs have congratulated Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris and expected the furtherance of tough American policies on China. President of Istarkistan Information Center, Rukia Turdush, says that this decision has a symbolic meaning and puts a criminal stamp on China. Like other Uyghurs, she hopes that governments around the world will share the burden with the United States to stop the ongoing genocide. China created fake news against the United States forced labor accusations. The Chinese state media distributed videos interviewing hundreds of Uyghur women in factories. They said they are happy to be having a job and getting reasonable payment. Eyewitness Yelisin Erkin, who worked for three years in Chapsal County's forced labor camp as an interpreter in Hulja City, told Uyghur TV that the situation is entirely different than what the Chinese media described. He says that 70% of the laborers are women between 16 to 45 years old, working in the factory designated as a forced labor camp. These women are not allowed to go home and see their family members unless they get emergency issues as well as have permission from the factory owner. Monthly salaries range between $5.88 to $61.90, barely enough for their hygiene expenses despite being forced to work for 14 hours every day. Yelisin Erkin recently escaped to Ukraine and is now facing the threat of being forcibly returned to China. The European Council on Foreign Relations think tank surveyed 15,000 people from 11 countries and found 6 out of 10 thought China would become more powerful than the U.S. within the next 10 years, according to its reports published on Tuesday. New Biden administration would like to establish alliances against China's threat. However, Europeans are unlikely to take sides with the United States and are willing to do business with China, that is, committing genocide against the Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims, actively pursuing territorial claims in the South China Sea, and brutally violating Hong Kong's autonomy. Nijat Turhun from the Uyghur Research Institute says that Europeans are looking for a balanced position between the United States and China. There is two reasons for the EU's position in the relation of the US and the China. The one is EU's effort to reach strategic autonomy and be the third global power together with the US and the China. The second one is that is the plan of economic recovery which forces the EU state to strike an investment deal with China and stay neutral in the rivalry of China and the US. I think in the middle and the long term, US and the EU will have to get closer to each other because a powerful China will not be peaceful and pose a huge economic, technological security threat to the US and the EU. Therefore, politicians and policymakers should rethink their China policy and find a common policy based on transatlantic interests.